Alright, Shalom, Shalom. First and foremost, I'd like to give all praises, honor, and glory unto the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Makakodash, the Bahan of the Apostles and the Elders that do rule by a great millstone. Peace and salutation to the Akiah Mother, pushing his gospel and sincerity and truth. So Shalom to the humble and sincere sisters out there as well. The Brother Kalam from the Jemesh Rat Camp. Coming back with another lesson entitled not literal trees right and this would be a quick a quick lesson you know just talking about um the trees that were in the garden with adam that they are not literal trees but they are people right they were people right they were they were human beings and the sun it wasn't literal trees to where adam was eating of a tree of life and by eating of this tree, you know, um, he was, this, this fruit was, was magically giving him wisdom. You know, it, 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 it didn't work like that. The trees that were being referred to, the tree of life, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil were people, right? And, um, <coughs> The tree of life, you know, when Adam made the Lord tell him to speak to, you know, to only eat of the tree, of the tree of life, it was referring to men that had this wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. You understand? Um, I'll read our first precept here, the Sirach 24, verse 1, verse 8. It says, So the Creator of all things gave me a commandment. And he that made me cause my tabernacle to rest and said, Let thy dwelling be in Jacob and thine inheritance in Israel. He created me from the beginning before the world, and I shall never fail. In the holy tabernacle I served before him, and so was I established in Zion. Right? So, this is wisdom here. It said wisdom was created before the foundations of the world. You understand? And... Our next precept I want to bring out is Sirach chapter 19 verse 19 where it says the knowledge of the commandments of the Lord is the doctrine of life and they that do things that please him shall receive the fruit of the tree of immortality right the fruit of the tree of immortality all right so the fruit of the tree of immortality and the scripture we read previously it said that um, the Lord caused wisdom to rest in Israel and that wisdom's dwelling place is in Zion Right, so the tree of life when it was speaking of the tree of life. It was speaking of the of, of the men Right the prophets men that were there that were of the that was the sons of, of the Heavenly Father because Adam was not the only um, Man on the earth, right? There were the Adamites. They were the sons of God. They were the sons of um man and they were the sons of 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 the devil right so that's why the scriptures also say you heard the, the voice of the lord was walking through the cool of the day roughly paraphrasing right those were the, the prophets right and adam sought to hide himself from the prophets you know and the prophets were there from the beginning of time right so it says here, the knowledge of the commandments of the Lord is the doctrine of life. So those trees, those men, they had what? The doctrine of life, the tree of life. You understand? And what was the doct what was what was the life that they had? The knowledge of the commandments of the Lord. It say what? Um shall receive the fruit of the tree of immortality. You understand? Now when it says the tree of immortality, is it referring to a literal tree? No. You understand so you might sometimes the scriptures would be, would say certain things and would use words to describe certain things and you know if you had a spirit upon you you would be able to decipher and understand which we really trying to say right so let me go to the book of Genesis chapter 2 verse 9 <clears throat> it's an out of the ground made the lord power to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food right so it was talking about literal trees as well right it said the tree of life also in the midst of the garden and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil right so 
yet as we see in um he grew every tree that is pleasant to the sight right so it had trees literal trees and it had metaphorical trees which is referring to people some people had the tree of life what is the life the knowledge of the commandments of the most high right the fear of the lord which is wisdom right those trees some trees had wisdom and the tree of knowledge of good and evil other trees had a different wisdom you understand a different understanding and let me read down here to verse 16 and the lord power commanded the man saying of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it for in the day that thou eatest therefore thou shalt surely die all right so here it is the most i tell adam out of all these trees you could eat you could eat the tree the literal trees you could eat to eat some right is to take it in to receive it right let me read in um let me get it one time Ezekiel 3 verse 1 it say moreover he said unto me son of man eat that thou findest eat this rule and go speak unto the house of Israel so I opened my mouth and he caused me to eat that rule now what was this rule the, the rule was the scriptures the word of the heavenly father the, the wisdom knowledge and understanding right it say after he eat this rule he was to go and speak unto Israel now by he eating a literal rule right a literal scroll or something by he shoving a scroll down his throat is that going to make him wise no but by to, to eat something in this sense is to receive it right he received the word of the lord right another example is revelation 10 9 and i went unto the angel and he said unto me give me the little book and he said unto me take it and eat it up and it shall make thy belly bitter but it shall be in thy mouth sweet as honey and i took the little book out of the angel's hand and ate it up and it was in my mouth sweet as honey and as soon as i had eaten it my belly was bitter and he said unto me thou must prophesy again before many peoples and nations and tongues and kings again if you take a book and try to sh sh shove it down your throat that is not going to increase your wisdom or your intelligence in any form right you're just gonna have a set of pages in your stomach right you know it don't make no sense right so is it that the bible just is a book that don't make no sense a fairy tale no it did it, it, it's a metaphor what are you trying to say when you eat this little book to eat it the same way when you eat food it goes into your mouth into your into your esophagus into your stomach and your body literally absorbs the nutrients of the food that you've eaten to eat this little book is to receive the words to receive the, the, the wisdom the understanding from the book and for into instead of into your stomach into your spirit into your mind right so when we go back in genesis chapter 2 the 16 the Mosa is telling adam that he could eat of the tree of life right if he's trying to tell him that he could receive of the tree of life he could receive the words he could receive the understanding the wisdom <sighs> the knowledge of these men right because this is this is actually what is good for food he said but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it for in the day that thou eatest thereof thou shalt surely die now how could eating a fruit cause you to die it was not it wasn't it was not fruit it was the things that they have they, they taught it was the things that those the wisdom that those men had the knowledge that those men had would have brought him to be put to death because that knowledge was what disobedience right that knowledge was contrary to the knowledge that the tree of life had right now it was all ordained because to be a god is to know good and evil right to live life is to go through joy and sorrow to go through both sides to be put in darkness and in light you know this is the, the path that all men elect you know how to, how to go through you understand to, to be able to judge one must first understand evil right to understand good must one must understand bad 
to understand righteousness or unrighteousness right um so right next precept i want to bring is ezekiel chapter 31 verse 8 This is the book of Ezekiel, chapter 31, verse 8. The cedars in the garden of power could not hide him. The fir trees were not like his bows. The chestnut trees were not like his branches. Nor any tree in the garden of power was like unto him in his beauty. Um, Uh, verse 9, I have made him fair by the multitude of his branches, so that all the trees of Eden that were in the garden of power envied him. Right? Now, ask yourself, is a tree capable of envy? Can a tree jealous another tree? No, because trees don't have emotions. Trees do not feel emotions like, like men do, like women do right it's a the cedars in the garden the men in the garden right they were not like him their fruit trees were not like the fruit trees were not like his bows the chestnut trees were not like his branches meaning that adam was more beautiful adam was more fair adam was more powerful right adam looked different than the rest of the of the other men of the other people that were in the garden the reason being because why he had that breath of life within him he had that light within him he was a son of god right and by by that alone by that perfection by that perfected state that 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 innocent state it caused him to shine it caused him to glow right the same way in the kingdom of heaven, you're going to know an Israelite by, by just seeing them. That's how it was with Adam. By the, they just looking upon him, they knew that he was Adam. He was the son of God. Right? They say what? They envied him. The men that were in the garden envied Adam. This is the whole reason as to why he had that downfall. Right? Because when you really look at the serpent, this which, which was a man, the serpent understood that he couldn't break Adam, so he went to Eve, right? And what is a man's number one weakness? Woman. A woman, woman on a whole is the main weakness of men. Thus say the scriptures as well. In first address, for it is as it is as if women are above us. Because of how much we would do, how much we would sacrifice for their benefit and the serpent used Eve to destroy Adam right because why they envied him the same way the so called white man he saw is this for Lord and enemies make a tumult against thee and they that he they have taken crafty counsel against thee the same way in these last days Esau is gonna come down and kill our people how they be killing our people right now the hatred that Esau has for Jake, right? Slavery, right? They envy us. They envy the things that we have. They envy our purpose. So they sought to take it from us. Just like back, just like back then. The same way the serpent took it from Adam. Esau is trying to take it from Jacob all over again. Right? But showing here that they you see there's not literal trees. There is no way that it could be literal trees. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter two, verse thirteen. Um Yes, it's a uh, Isaiah 2 verse 12 we say for the day of the Lord of hosts shall be upon everyone that is proud proud and lofty and upon everyone that is lifted up 
and he shall be brought low and upon all the cedars of Lebanon that are high and lifted up and upon all the oaks of Bashan and upon all the high mountains and upon all the hills that are lifted up and upon every high tower and upon every fence wall right so basically it's a, it's a all the cedars of Lebanon that are high and lifted up now could a tree be prideful no could a tree be arrogant could a tree be boastful could a tree be lofty no right so it is talking about the lord bringing down the proud and the lofty right he is going to say that everyone that is lifted up shall be brought low so he's using the cedars the trees of lebanon for their because of their size and because you know the the, the, the their length right he's he's using this to describe man proud proud men and saying this is how their countenance is right they are pride they are lofty they are exalted but he's here to bring them down he's here to, to, to cut them down right um Isaiah 14 verse 8 it say, Yea, the fruit trees rejoice at thee, and the cedars of Lebanon, saying, Since thou art laid down, no fellows come against us. Now ask yourself again, could a fruit tree rejoice? It said the cedars of Lebanon, saying, Could a tree speak? Right. What tree you know said, Since thou art laid down, no fellows come up, come up against us. The trees don't speak. The trees do not rejoice. Right? So these, these precepts that I've brought out is proof, right? Because there's various examples showing trees being used to describe man. Um, just want to bring out this last precept. In Matthew chapter 3 verse 10. And now also the axe is laid unto the root of the trees. Therefore, every tree which bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Again, ask yourself, what is this talking about? The axe is laid onto the root of the trees, and if the tree does not bring forth good fruit, it is hewn down, it will be cut down and cast into a fire. This is not talking about literal trees, this is talking about men. And it is saying that if men do not produce good fruit, right? good works right because the works of a tree is shown in their fruits because the whole purpose of the damn tree is to produce fruit right so the whole purpose of a man is going to be shown in his works and if the works that he has produced is not good he is going to be cut down and he's going to be cast into fire but if the same if a tree if a man produces good fruit and he shall not deny he shall be cast into salvation right another precept came to mind this is um matthew 7 <clears throat> verse 17 it's every even so every good tree bring it forth good fruit but a corrupt tree bring it forth evil fruit a good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is, is hewn down and cast into the fire, wherefore by their fruits ye shall know them. Again, there is no such thing as a good or a corrupt tree. There is no such thing as a corrupted tree. A tree does not have a, a mind to corrupt. Right? A tree cannot be beguiled. A tree cannot be misled. A tree cannot be indoctrinated. A tree cannot be corrupted. Right? A tree cannot bring forth good fruit or evil fruit. A tree just brings forth fruit. You understand? And there's no good or bad tree. They are just trees. Right? So what is this talking about? This is talking about men. And it is saying, if a man brings forth good fruit, good works... I'm so like it's saying um, that a good tree, a good man, could only bring forth good fruit, 
right and that a corrupt tree an evil man a misled man is not able to bring forth good fruit he will only bring forth corrupted fruit because that is what he is a thief will do nothing but steal a murderer will do nothing but murder an adulterer will do nothing but commit adultery the same a righteous man will strive to do nothing but righteousness right so i hope i proved the point the trees in the garden of eden were literal men and not literal trees and with that hope this was edifying our praises and our glory